we're talking hats today. When is it appropriate to wear hats? I've got some cool, really cool origin stories and some etiquette rules, and then you be the judge. Stay tuned. some fun and talk about hats. When is it appropriate to wear a hat? Well, you know, how long have we been wearing hats? You ask, well, since time began, we've been wearing some kind of a hat, you know, and, and hats have represented things. They've had meaning throughout the ages. Uh, there's a cool story about um, in, in Rome, Roman slaves, when they were emancipated, they were given a hat. Uh, it was a version of a Frisian hat, which was a sort of a conical shaped hat that went up and the top fell over just a little bit. It just had a little bend at the top, a Phrygian hat. And that meant freedom. Yes, these slaves, they were emancipated. They had freedom. And people were wearing those caps long before that. That's another video. But throughout the ages, that cap came to mean freedom and it was usually red and it appears in the American Revolution because the revolutionists wore it for freedom and then we see it again a few years later in the French Revolution and we've seen it from time to time you'll still see it today for different things because it meant freedom so you know that's hats have meanings they mean something to us and, and when are you supposed to wear those hats? You know, what's the etiquette of that? Well, traditional etiquette's pretty strict on, they have rules and they're very different, very different for the genders. So, okay, so let's just start in for women because it's a little easier. Women could pretty much wear a hat anytime. You could always just keep put your hat on and wear it and wear it. If you were invited to someone's home for afternoon tea, you would go and wear your hat if you liked. Now, be aware that the uh, host of the hostess of the home, you would not wear a hat in your own home, but people could come and visit you. Okay, great. Inside, outside. For ladies, no problem. Many um, houses of worship even require your head to be covered. Okay. Now for men, listen up guys, totally different story. Guys, you have strict rules and your uh, traditional etiquette says caps, hats off inside, in private places, inside someone's home, inside your office, inside a place of worship, depending on your religion. Okay, so if you're inside, you would take off your hat. It was respectful. Now, if you're outside, okay, you're outside, you're at the ballpark, wear your ball cap if you are, you know, whatever. But the interesting bars are considered outside, especially bars that are sort of, there's a little alfresco area and then a little bit inside. You could wear a cap there or a hat in there. But generally, guys, you would, men would, of course, remove your hat during national anthems or if your country's flag goes by, you would remove your hat. And even there was even etiquette about tipping your hat. Let's just say, here's my, my hat I wear at the beach. Okay, so if a gentleman, a lady would go by, there would be, you could sort of grab your the brim of your hat that was a nod that was a little sign of respect if you knew the person a greater sign of respect would be you'd go like this a little tip of the hat you know if you will you would see someone and a great the greatest sign of respect would to be remove your hat again like i said if um, the national anthem or something's being played or your flag goes by so guys really strict etiquette now today I can't tell you the times people come into homes or in my home and they have on a cap and they keep it on. So what do you think about that? Is that good, bad? What do you think? Well, sometimes people have um, issues, even women, maybe, maybe they have cancer or they have some sort of issue and they've lost hair or they're, there's some kind of situation. Well then yeah, of course, that's fine. It's fine. Get over it. Don't, don't be so strict with the rules, you know, just be reasonable. Okay. But let me tell you where this came from, because it might guys, if you're just wearing a ball cap, just, just cause you know, you just, you just feel like it and you go into someone's home. 
Let me tell you where that came from, and it might change your mind a little bit. Okay, we are in the Middle Ages, and we're talking about knights in shining armor. Yeah, you were thinking um, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Yeah, those guys, and they were brave, and they were courtly, and they were, they were Renaissance men. They were something else. And they had definite etiquette and uh, ways with wearing their suits of armor. Because if they took any part of that armor off, they were vulnerable. They subjected themselves to possible death or, or being lamed. Yes, so think about the helmet that a, a knight wore. And there was a visor, right? Okay, well, uh, what the etiquette was, if a knight wanted to show friendliness, that nothing's going to happen in this moment, a knight could rise, raise up the visor. His eyes would be exposed, right? A spear could come through, and that happened. But, but to pull the visor up meant nothing's happening. This is friendly. This is a friendly, I'm respecting you. And do you know what? This is super cool. This is cool, you guys. The today's military salute derives from that, derives from the knights lifting their visors, that and the Roman salute. That's where we get current day military salutes around the world from the knights lifting up their visors out of respect. Isn't that cool? Well, there's more with those knights. They're such awesome guys. Okay, well, the whole helmet. Now, a knight, if a knight went into someone's home where someone lived, the knight would remove that entire helmet, exposing his whole head, making him completely vulnerable to death. And that would happen. But this would be such a sign of respect. I respect you so much. I will make myself vulnerable to death out of respect for you and your home. So fellas, next time you walk into somebody's hat, a house with a cap on, eh, think about that a little bit. Okay, so this is all cool, Heidi, but you know, let's talk about hats. I mean, somebody was making these hats. What's the deal with that? Well, yeah, that's a really neat story on this one. Let me tell you, and there's about three videos in here, but so drop me a comment if you want me to do more. But we are talking, uh, we're now in the Middle Ages, later Middle Ages, and people are making cats. And this goes up into the early 1900s. And it's a long story, like I said, a different video, but they discovered that the best way to get fur from the hides, because they were making hats from this, they would felt this fur and some of the best was camel hair. So how do you get camel hair off the hide? Well, it's, it's a very interesting story, and it's a long story how they figured this one out. Oh, it's, it's kind of, oh. But they figured out to use mercury, to use a form of mercury. It made it very easy to get the fur off the hides. From there, they felted it, and they made hats. Sounded good, except mercury is incredibly poisonous. It destroys your, your nervous system. And people were going you know, they'd have uncontrollable thoughts, movements, speech. It was destroying them. And you think about Lewis Carroll's uh, Alice in Wonderland. Think about the Hatter, right? And people think about the Mad Hatter. Well, that's what people were being called. They were being called Mad Hatters because it seemed, the symptoms seemed as though they had gone mad, they'd gone out of their minds. Well, they had not, it, it was mercury poison and, and many, many people lost their lives or were devastated through this mercury poisoning until they finally figured it out and then it was outlawed. But there was a time in the early 1900s in, in Connecticut, in Danbury, Connecticut, Thousands of, of milliners were, were sick with this mercury poisoning and they finally, finally figured it out. But this is something super cool. I love this. I love these kinds of things, you guys. So as a nod, as a tribute in honor of all those milliners throughout centuries that became devastated by mercury poisoning or lost their lives through it, Today's milliners in the back of nice caps have a tribute. They have a tribute to the milliners, and it is found in the back of a nice cap. So go in your closet, 
pull out your nice hat, your cap. This is my real French beret. I walked all through the streets of Paris one day to find it. And here in the back, I hope you can see this, is a little bow. You see this little ribbon? The back of fine hats has this little ribbon. And that is a nod, a, a salute, if you will. We know where that came from, to the milliners. Isn't that neat? So it's extra special to have it. So, and I love, I'm a beret kind of gal. I've been wearing berets since I was a little girl and I still love them. And if I'm at a cafe that's sort of inside outside, I can wear my beret inside and I love them. I hope you enjoyed this story. I hope it gives you some food for thought when you're wearing hats and when is it appropriate to wear a hat? You know, the etiquette rules. Now, how are you going to use them, you know? It's all about respect. Bottom line, it's all about respect. Uh, please like this video. Subscribe, please, and tell me what you want to see because we can do all kinds of stuff together. And love your comments. Love your comments. Okay, you want more stories about it? Boy, oh boy, let me tell you how they figured out to use mercury. Holy buckets, that's a video. All right, as I always say, everybody, please be kind. Thank you.